Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna give you an overview of the Pentair Easy Touch control panel for the inside or the indoor version. I have another video on the outdoor version, so I'll put a link up here on the screen, and if you need to watch that video, you can click there. But this is gonna focus on the first half of the video on just the basic functions that a new pool owner or a new homeowner would want to adjust schedules and how to operate their pool. And then in the second half, we'll dig into the more advanced features here. But first off, one of the most important things you may need to do on a control panel like this is set the clock. So we're gonna hit menu. We are gonna use this arrow button and scroll down until we see settings. And we're gonna select clock. And here you can adjust the time and the date. All schedules are based off that time. And I find that the time gets off easily. So you're gonna to want to get to this menu every so often and update it. Daylight savings time is currently set to manual, but if you want to automatically um, adjust it and how much you can do so here. Okay, going back to the main menu, I'm just pressing this menu button and this is the general menu or the general screen that you're gonna see. It's currently in the auto mode, which means if I have schedule set, they will be operating. Currently the pool is running it's 52 degrees Fahrenheit and it's on, on its way to 85 degrees if the heater was uh, on as well. It's 59 degrees outside and there's our time and date. P for program mode, up and down, left and right, and menu key. This is what will turn your programs on or off. It's in auto mode. If I don't want my pool to be running even though it's scheduled to do so, I can press this button and now it just shut off my pool. If the um, pool is not scheduled to be on currently, but I do want it on. I can press here and I can activate it. Okay, the other manual functions that we can see here is if you had additional auxiliary functions, which I don't have, but if I wanted to run my pool cleaner right now, I'm gonna press here. It's gonna start flashing because there's a delay of about a minute set. If I wanna turn on my landscape yard lights, I'll press here, spa light, pool light, Next up is waterfall. If I press here, it's gonna crank up the pool pump and push additional water through my hot tub, making a larger waterfall. Let's say we're done with all these, we'll turn them off. The next up is spa. If I want to go in the hot tub right now, I could press the spa button. It's gonna kick on the heater. It went to spa mode and it's set at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. If I want it to be warmer than that, I need to go into my menu. I'll press menu. I scroll to the heat, I press select, I go to spa, I press select, and it's set at 95. If I want it to be 100, I'll just select 100, and I'll hit select. The heater is on, I'm gonna press menu, and now it's gonna achieve 100 degrees once it, once it can. If I wanna change my pool temperature, I'll turn off the spa here, I'll go back to menu, to heat, pool, and I will set my pool temperature. Currently it's set to off on the heater, but if I wanted to turn it on, I would simply hit select, and I would choose heater, and my pool heater would kick on and it would try to achieve 87 degrees. I want it off, so I'm gonna hit off, menu, menu, menu. Now I'm back to the main menu. Okay, so those are the basic functions of this easy touch control panel. The biggest thing being, these are manual buttons to activate anything. It's in auto mode. This is what's running. Make sure your clock is accurate. And if you wanna start or stop any of these functions here, just press the P button. Okay, the other basic feature that you would use on this control panel is adjusting your schedules. So I would hit menu. I would scroll down till I see the word schedules. I'll press select. And what we can see is that we have one schedule for the pool and two for the waterfall. Now, if I go to pool, I hit select, that one schedule is from 9 a.m. to 3.50 p.m. Every single day of the week, it will run my filter pump. I have it shut off at 3.50 because at four o'clock, the power prices increase significantly. So to save money and energy, so if your electricity costs more at certain times of the day, you can operate your pump outside that time. Now, what happens in this menu, and it's very easy to do, is if you go to hit up, 
you accidentally created a new schedule. Now you have two schedules running on top of each other. If I press again, I got three, and you can get lost here. So what I need to teach you is, once you've created additional schedules you don't want, go ahead and press select and get to here. Here, we wanna scroll down to delete and hit select. And now I deleted those schedules, or at least the third one. I need to delete the second one again here. Okay, now we're back to one schedule. But from here, you can choose an egg timer or a basic schedule. You can choose what time, what day of the week, and things like that. Okay, so going back on the menu, that is the schedule for the pool. On our waterfall, we have it run twice a day from 12 to 12.04 and also between 3 to 3.05 because we want to um, create extra bubbles and water flow to push debris out of the hot tub and into the main pool so that the pool robot and the skimmer system can suck up those debris and clean out the hot tub. I have no other schedule set, but if you wanted to, you could create a schedule that your pool light goes on every night at 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., for example, or landscape lights. Okay, so those are the basic features of the Pentair Easy Touch system, and this is the eight button model. There's also a lower button model, and then there's also a wireless version of this. Okay, now if we wanna talk about the advanced features of this Easy Touch, what you can do is control almost every setting that's outside on the outside control panel from here. I would hit menu, and these are all the features and settings I can mess with. I'm not sure what feature circuits does, but number two would be lights. And this is if you have the Pentair light system with colors and things like that, you can adjust it here. If you have a basic light system, you activate it on this button, or you would have a schedule set for it. Next up is the heater menu, which we already talked about and the delay cancel, which we talked about, as well as schedules. Now settings, I can go into settings and I can adjust my clock or I can adjust the speed of my pump. So I have two pump options. I only have one installed in my system, but pump one is a VS for variable speed. That means it doesn't just run at one speed and I can control those speeds. Now this is usually set by your pool builder. So unless you know what you're doing, you don't want to um, adjust these because you need to move a certain amount of pool through your filter every single day. But let's just look at my eight numbers here. Number one is pool, cleaner, spa, waterfall, freeze protection, solar heating, pool heater, and none. So that'll just give you a reference in case you're building your pool system. Okay. Next up is priming. This is where you can adjust how long it's going to prime at what speed. The next is status, which is cool because you can see the current RPM and also how much electricity we're using. We're only using 840 watts to run this pool pump, which is why you want to look into a variable speed if you don't have one already. Okay, so that's the end of the pump and teleflow menu. Next up is IntelliClore. If you have a saltwater pool system, some people do. This is where you can adjust your chlorinator. So currently mine is not enabled, but if I wanted to, I could turn it on and how hard it's working. And then the next page two here is if you wanna run super chlorinated mode. So if you select that, it'll run at the highest chlorine generating mode for 24 hours, or I can edit that number. And basically your IntelliClor, it's taking the salt adding some electricity with the electrolysis and it's creating chlorine. So these are people that don't have to add chlorine because they have this expensive device that creates chlorine. They're really expensive right now. They're like 500 to $1,200. They used to be a lot cheaper, but inflation's made them quite expensive. Next up is IntelliChem. So if you had a chemical um, system from Pentair, you could adjust it here. I don't. Next up is if you have a heat pump, you can control it. And then here you can start to name functions and circuits and anything like that and adjust valves. I have a pool water solar heating system. And so you can enter here, it's enabled. And on page two, it is freeze enabled, meaning if it gets too cold, it'll push water to my solar panels and keep the water moving so they don't freeze on the roof. If you get 
to a really cold place, um, you may need to winterize those. But in California, we keep our pool running all year round. And then number three is if the roof sensor gets three degrees warmer than the pool water, it will send water to the roof to heat the water. And it'll continue to do so as long as there's a two degree split. But as soon as the roof temperature is very similar to the water temperature, it will stop this system. But it's basically taking heat from the roof and warming up the water. Next up is delays if you need to adjust, and then if you need to go between English and metric system. IS4 is the small control panel out by the hot tub, and you could go here and you have four buttons and you can customize these. Button one is if I press button one, it will turn my spa on. So that's nice when you're sitting in the spa and you want to shut it off and turn off the heat or just have some quiet time, press the spa button. Number two, I have nothing because my son likes to press it, but you can put anything you want here. So I would just hit select and I can have it turn on the waterfall, different lights, things like that. Okay. But if I don't want it, I look for the word none. I select it and I don't have that one being utilized. Number three is a pool light and number four is a spotlight. So we can control all those from the outside waterproof uh, control panel. Okay, calibration. If you find that your water temperature or your outside air temperature is off, you could go to calibration and you can adjust those numbers. So you could go measure it with your own temperature gauge and then adjust it here so it's more accurate. Next up, you can set passwords and that's about the end of this menu. We'll go back one level. Next up is spa side on. So if I wanna turn off that control panel that's out by the spa just temporarily altogether, I can do so here. That's if you have like a party with kids and they're pressing on and off, you can just adjust it. Okay, next up is diagnostics and you can enter here and you can see the software revision that you're running on the control panel. You can load software, you can do a self test. You can see what your chlorinator salt levels are. So in this case, 33, 50 parts per million. This number is inherently um, unreliable because the water temperature affects it quite a bit. So do your own salt level test with a Taylor test kit. You'll thank me later. It's much more accurate than this ever is. I can see my water temperature, my solar roof temperature. It's cold out today air temperature and you can do some resets here, but don't touch those other features unless you know what you're doing. Okay, if you wanna learn more about controlling your outside Pentair panel, I have a video on that. And I have a video coming on how to install your own screen logic by Pentair, so you can control your entire pool with your phone and an app. If you like this video, please subscribe so you see future pool content like this. We'll see you in the next video.